Hello and welcome to this video. We continue our network analysis and scientometric and bibliometric analysis uh, with bibliometrics package in our studio. And now we want to uh, start with social networks or collaboration networks. Uh, before we jump into network analysis and sh seeing how each um, function works, what I would like to show you is to introduce you to a couple of very, very good uh, sources that you can learn more about network analysis and about uh, how you can infer the results of the analysis uh, and uh, what does each visualization mean. So here again, we have uh, the bibliometrics package, which is written by Massimo Aria and uh, Corrado Cucorolo, who are the curators of this package that we're going, we are using, and I will show you in a couple of minutes, seconds hopefully. Uh, then I, uh, there is this website by Scott Wengard, and it's about demystifying networks, and it's in four parts, so it's a great source of learning about network analysis, the terms, uh, the relationships uh, in the network, and um, the visualization and it's in four parts and it, it, it's very well written and very simple to understand. I highly suggest to read it if you are uh, learning network analysis. Then the next thing uh, for network analysis, if you just want to start it without a package is this, this website, which is quite good. And it's for uh, working uh, with uh, network visualization in R. Uh, the last one, which I later come back to it again, it's a scientific article by these authors in 2017. It's about network science, and if you have an academic account, you can find this publication. Uh, there are, I'm sure that there are other great, great sources out there in the internet. These are the ones that I know and I have read, so I would, I am suggesting them to you. Uh, now we start. Okay, so if you remember, I started after I downloaded the metadata and turned it into a uh, data frame for our studio, I extracted extra tags from the metadata. So I created extra columns, for example, these. And that was because for country collaboration, we need this column. RU stands for authors and CO stands for country. And if you go to our meta, uh, sorry, if you go to our data frame and we go to find the column, RU CO, it means that the author and the country is of the author, and RU1 CO is the country of the first author. Uh, this data is provided um, by the authors in every publication uh, due to their affiliation okay so now uh, we already have that information in our variable m uh, we are going to use the biblio network function which is a built-in function in our studio it requires the data and the type of analysis so we have a couple of t types uh, it could be collaboration, it could be coupling, it could be co-citation, co and it could be co-occurrence. Right now, we're just focusing on collaboration, and it shows the relationship, it, it kind of shows the social relationships between the nodes in one network. And a network can have different nodes. So the nodes can be countries, the nodes uh, can be... Uh, authors, uh, institutions, um, publication, uh, pub yes, references or publications, journals, uh, technically uh, <laughs> anything can be a node, and the relationship is analyzed through collaboration. And again, nodes are uh, units of analysis, so we are interested to see the collaboration, uh, collaboration relationship between the units of analysis. So here we want to see the collaboration between different countries. So let's start. We run the code. And as I showed you before, this is to create a high quality uh, 
picture uh, from our studio because the default is set to 96 dpi and for scientific publication you need 300 dpi here i set it to centimeters and the resolution is 400 dpi or ppi i'm not going to run it now because i'm not going to save this information and it's a little bit of time consuming function so next after we did this and we already saved all the information in net matrix uh, variable here you can see uh, we are going to use the function network plot and i'm going to show you the description for network plot so i'm going to open the help for network plot i erase the question mark and now uh, the first thing that we require is our variable that we want to visualize the plot. Okay, so uh, that's it. Then we need the number of uh, nodes that we want to be seen in the network. Right now, what I've written here, it means that I actually run it. So it means that the net, the matri the net matrix... Uh, a variable has a, a dimension and we are interested in the sec in, in the first dimension which is 19 as you can see here okay so this means extract first dimension from net matrix and this means that wh why I'm doing this so I don't know how many countries exist here in this network but what I know is that the number of countries are a certain number it's it's a finite number if you're analyzing um, records that are up to maybe 10,000 uh, publications then it could be that you have 10,000 authors it could be that you have 20,000 authors it could be that you have 30,000 authors but you don't want all the nodes to be visualized in your plot you you want maybe a maximum of a hundred top authors but when it comes to countries uh, you know that the, the, you, 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 you don't have a thousand countries in one network. So this is a kind of a secure way to make sure that you're kind of visualizing all, all the available countries in your network. And if you want, you can set it to maybe top 10, which is not the intention of a network analysis. But if you want, you can do that. Uh, the next thing is the title. So you can write any title that you're interested in. Size is actually th this, um, I will explain it when I visualize uh, the network. Uh, size is the, let's say, diameter. <laughs> I'm, I'm explaining in a very bad way. But let's say if we have relative diameters of uh, circles that are representing a node or a unit of analysis, if we set it to true, we will see that the sizes vary in... Uh, one network so the bigger the size the more links that node has and uh, the smaller the size and uh, the less node the less links with other nodes that that a specific node has you'll see this so remove multiples it means that if there are multiple uh, records uh, we will uh, see only one uh, link between two networks not two multiple networks uh, label size that that those those are these are the things that you can uh, set by yourself. Why I opened um, the description was actually uh, it's maybe it's better to explain it later with greater number of nodes. So what I right now uh, I already have I, I don't have any plot, but what I already have is as I said the network. What you have to remember here is that the network is already analyzed with this function so what we're going to do is just to visualize it and that's why if you want to see some statistics from the network we can just run it and then we can visualize for the top 10 and here it is so we can do this without visualizing the network but our intention is to visualize and see the network so here you see let me zoom yeah, it's a little bit small. Uh, you can change, uh, as I said, the edge size and the label size. I also you can do the same thing um, in the setting of R to create uh, bigger fonts. So you can see that, for example, China and United Kingdom 
are having a lot of uh, having a big link and this is because they have a lot of common publications if you remember when we were I run this code again. If you remember when we were visualizing the country collaboration uh, chart here, China had a lot of multiple country publications and UK, well, I think UK is not here right now, but yes, you can see now from, oh, sorry, you can see now that this is a link and then China has collaboration with Aus Australia, Australia with Hong Kong and there are the other countries that have publications but are not linked together, they're not really collaborating with each other and the size of the node that I explained before is now explained here so the bigger size of the US, USA uh, node shows that it has a lot of publications and again here you can see that the number of publications is more than others in our data pool so that's what you have to remember uh, we are speaking in the relative terms here in our data pool with a specific keywords that we search uh, and i wrote the key i, I will write the keyword in uh, the uh, description box it's about beam and blockchain which is a very new topic so uh, with respect to all of the circumstances uh, we have this analysis now on the statistics uh, so uh, as we saw we have uh, 19 nodes what is density so density it means the proportion of the let me go to this network so uh, density is the proportion of the present links to all the other uh, to all the possible network links and as you can see, the <laughs> density is quite low. That's why all the all the uh, all these countries, all these nodes are sparsely located in the in the graph. If it was higher, if it was a if it was a very dense network, first it meant that they 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 are really collaborating with each other, which is not the case in our network. So we don't have much links. There's not much collaboration uh, between the countries. And yes, so. Low density means few connections between nodes. It means uh, the nodes are uh, located uh, uh, far away from each other. And it, uh, it also means that the cohesion of, the, of that research field or of that research uh, keywords that you searched are very low when it comes to country collaboration. Other thing that we can uh, read from the statistics is diameter so diameter is uh, the distance between the, the the furthest distance between two nodes in our network and decrease centralization is actually an interesting um, network statistics so network centrality uh, well I will explain it in another graph because uh, here we have few nodes but what I would like to uh, show you is okay is that uh, in the bibliometrics um, explanations in the bibliometrics.org website you can go and read more about all of these descriptions uh, and it helps you to understand the networks and understand the relationship between the nodes in a network mm, well let's see Okay, here we are. So all of the, all of this is here. I will explain the degree centralization and centrality in the next network. So the net next network that we are going to work with is authors network. As I said, uh, we have more authors in publications because publications are usually re scientific publications are, uh, let's say, mostly written by more than two authors so again we use uh, we are we are doing a collaboration analysis or a unit of network or, or unit of analysis for this network is authors we do the network analysis and then what we're going to do is to visualize our network here we have more 
nodes. That's why we're not going to use this code and instead we're going to give a specific number to be visualized for us. So I set it to 50. Then uh, we go to help because I, um, I want to explain type. So we can choose different types of uh, network layout, visualization layout. Uh, it could be auto, which uh, will be decided by uh, computer. It could be circle, uh, it could be a sphere, it could be MDS or mul uh, multidimensional scaling layout. It could be uh, Fruchterman or it could be Kamada, which is uh, Kamada Kawaii. Uh, then we can say remove isolate, F means false, uh, remove multiples, true, yes, because I don't want to have multiple links between nodes, and uh, yes, I, I have chosen the, the, uh, the minimum size 7, so what is hollow? Hollow means that when we have some, some nodes that correlate with each other, uh, we want to cluster them and we want to show them in um, a, a specific color uh, gathered by a line and uh, curved here is set to false it means that the relationship between two nodes uh, is, is going to be shown linearly if I set it to true or t and run the same code you will see that it will be a little bit curved, okay? This is uh, just a visualization uh, preference, and as I said, uh, it doesn't change the results of the collaboration analysis. It's just the way that we are seeing the network. But it's, it's quite interesting, so let's see. When we try, uh, what is uh, Fruchterman? So Fruchterman, as I said, in network analysis is a kind of algorithm to generate a layout uh, to position the nodes in a network uh, in, uh, in a network based on some forced based directed network so what, what I mean by forced based uh, well in physics well, for example we have a gravitational force and if you consider a spring uh, the way that some springs are related to each other uh, is because of the forces that govern between them so uh, Fruchtenmann is, uh, is the name of a scientist, but uh, here is the name of this uh, specific uh, technique that coordinates the nodes in a way that the edges of the nodes are not crossing each other, or let's say minimize the crossing of the nodes. So, for example, I will zoom. So, for example, these two nodes, they are not crossing each other, the link. This is the link, these are the nodes or vertices. And this edge is crossing this edge. So, Fruchterman tries to minimize the nodes, the, sorry, the crossing of the nodes. Uh, however, one thing that is important is that Fruchterman, like uh, Kamada Kawai, is not deterministic. So, um, Every time that you run the network, you receive a slightly different result. It's very, very slightly, especially here. We don't have a lot of records. We just have uh, 51 publications, so we, we shouldn't expect a big change. But yeah, I run the code and you can see that every time it arranges the nodes in a different way. Uh, and this is hollow. So if we remove hollow and we set it to F, Mm, what happened? Expected. Okay. Set it to three. So you can see that the ho uh, the hollow is gone, and I pretty much prefer for small networks to have hollow, but just that that's just me. So. You have to uh, make these decisions based on your own um, considerations. 
sorry uh yeah so i set it to true again and another thing that i can say about fruchtemann is that uh the idea is to minimize the edges uh that cross each other and uh, it's a kind of uh just visualization a technique it's it's again doesn't have anything to do with respect to uh analysis the analysis of the network so um i have also found some good visualization uh for you so this is fruchtemann and this is kamada kawai you can see that they're quite the same again in this publication um we have a very good explanation so this is uh, Fruchtemann and this is Kamada Kawai and you can see that they are very close to each other uh, the difference is that the algorithm the algorithm that generates them take into consideration different uh, uh, let's say parameters for calculating the force of the springs between the nodes uh, the next thing is okay i think i have already showed you everything now i will go back to my r and here i will show you the next the same network with kamada instead of fruchtemann here it is so you can see that they're kind of the same uh, one thing that i think is also a difference a little bit of difference maybe between kamada and fruchtemann is that in fruchtemann uh, uh, the, the algorithm tries to keep the link uh, uh, at the same size but uh, Kamada works uh, slightly differently so that's another difference that just came to my mind okay I think I have explained everything here now we can go to see the collaboration between in uh, scientific institutes or R&D institutes or uh, universities uh, all of them are represented by the uh, by the unit of analysis universities here so we run the code and you have to uh, set the separation unit as this one then okay so here again we have 30 uh, so here is 30 note and the title I set in uh, I wrote Institute uh, collaboration network type is auto but again you can set it as, as whatever you want size size okay i didn't explain this one so what is a cx uh, uh, when you set it to true it means that you can have variation of the sizes when it's false all the sizes in the net all the sizes of the node in a network in the node will be similar so i set it to false or f uh, i won't change anything hello let's see so here you can see that the sizes are again zoom all the same when i set this to true it has more relationship with other nodes for example in these you can see that the relationships are quite blue um, now going back to network statistics i run the code and now I will try to explain the remaining. So degree centralization. What does it mean? So we have centrality in a network. Centrality means how central or how important the nodes are in the whole network. I will zoom. Uh, for example, this node is quite central. Okay, even though it's not related to other nodes or other universities this is a central node and maybe if we had a network of uh, references uh, you could see this more clearly but for now just remember that that that, that is the meaning of centrality uh, and when a node has more connections with other nodes it's more in the center uh, here we cannot really see it uh, but that's fine because we can we, we, we can see the degree centralization that is here which is a metric for understanding the centrality of the overall network 
So when we want to see it, with degree centrality, we want to see how central the most central node is with respect to the whole network. And you can see again that here the density is low. It means that uh, there is not much collaboration in the net, in our network, regardless of the unit of analysis. And that we can see that uh, the centrality is uh, low, and the degree degree of centrality is also low. Uh, so uh, in, even the central nodes are not really in the center and it's not a big surprise because uh, it's not a very well linked uh, uh, network and it in this example it really goes back to the fact that we only have 51 records in our network if you have a thousand you will see a completely different landscape uh, in any case i find these networks quite good for finding for example the universities that are more active in the field of blockchain uh, and beam in our example or here this was again in good so for example here we can see that uh, the scientists um, for example prara s is collaborating with these other with these group and or Navari is uh, collaborating with this guy uh, or, <laughs> or lady, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, this is a good way to uh, follow uh, researchers and to go and uh, read their articles. So I think I explained most of the things that are related to network analysis for social collaboration and with respect to bibliometrics analysis. Uh, uh, again, the help is here, and you have a very well written document uh, in the in the in the website that you can go and read. And I hope that this video was helpful for you. I look forward to any question or if you want to share your experiences. Um, so for now, I will say goodbye, and I will see you in the next videos, which we will explore different types of analysis, including. Uh, co-citation, uh, co-occurrence, and coupling. Good luck, and see you soon.